Today we are going to start um, working on what they refer to as the hood, which is really the deck house that fits in the cockpit and allows access down into the hull of the ship. And we're going to do the same thing that we did with the skylight. We're going to clad the sides um, to get rid of that plywood look. And it should look something like this when it's all clad out. This morning we are tackling the sliding hatch cover for the top and to do this we cut a series of small pieces of some scrap, angle the side of the boards and stuck them together. In this case we use PVA glue. Um, then we sanded them down on the spiral sander and the result was a blank piece that will slide over the top. So now we're just going to cut the piece um, to the correct size. You may remember that we didn't use the deck strips of Mukala that were supplied with the boat. So we're now going to use them to plank the cockpit sides um, to correspond with most of the paintings and um, with the, the replica that was built which shows short pieces coming up and we're going to use two millimeter thick, sorry, two millimeter wide pieces. One of the problems I had cutting the 2mm um, boards is that when I put this very thin plank in here it would simply go under the fence and that caused a major problem. So it wasn't long before I figured out that the solution to that Check the 2mm setting which is 2.6mm which I'll set against the blade. And that will give me a 2mm piece. Then if you leave this like that it's going to travel. So we put this little block here and clamp it down. 
which prevents this from moving. And then we simply put and we get our two millimeter pieces. To help with lining up the boards in the cockpit, you should put some lines that make sure that the the boards are at 90 degrees uh, to the floor of the um, of the deck. The next job we have is to level the cockpit so that it's all exactly the same height. And to do this, we have measured the lowest spot and gone all around. And then we've been using the pen sander to sand it down. Um, maybe there's a better way to do this, but this is the only way I could figure out how to get this absolutely the same height to the deck all the way around the, the cockpit area. Well, we're very happy with how that is coming out, um, both the inside and outside look pretty good. So we'll continue to work on it till it's all cleaned up. We've been experimenting with a number of ways to bend um, the wood to, so that we can make up the top rail of the cockpit. And this is the system that we've decided. We found a piece of PVC that was the exact diameter of the cockpit um, walls. And we've put a piece of brass um, strip simply because that's all I had. Um, soaked the wood for 24 hours without heat and then clamped it and then using the metal to keep the back of the wood from rippling we bent them together and clamped them and we're going to leave them for 24 hours in the sun. Here it is um, using the time lapse uh, clamp that holds it in place and really the key to not getting a kink in the wood is having that metal backing plate um, as we bend. Well, it was very strange, but the two ends of the um, of the rail um, really didn't follow the curve. So I've used the iron to try and help uh, get a nice, clean, consistent curve. And, um, and then of course clamped it in place and that seemed to work. We've fitted it into the cockpit um, and we're just going to let it sit there for 24 hours and when we take it out it should fit the top rail of the co cockpit perfectly. And so sad, so done, it fits absolutely spot on. I'm always looking for better ways to do uh, things, particularly bending. Um, so I've tried this different method where I put the same unit that you just saw after I got it bent in a bowl surrounded with water and put it to boil until I got a head of steam and then we have left it in the steam bath for half an hour.
so we'll see how this goes. Um, it's distorted the uh, plastic as I thought it might, so that's not a very good method. So we reinstall it back on the side that didn't get bent and we leave it for 24 hours and see if that's in fact a better way of getting a bend. Clearly if you're going to steam it you need metal metal parts to hold the shape. And um, once we take it off I have to say I was pleasantly surprised that the second method um, actually worked better because the ends um, had a perfect round shape and then when we fitted it on the model it fit perfectly. So it's your choice. Um, they both worked uh, just as well. Um, I don't think it really matters whichever one you pick. So now we are going to put it on the gym bonds and split it. Um, we're setting it up at two millimeters and just being very careful and it works fine. For both um, models we did two sizes or two thicknesses for the cap rail of the cockpit. The first one was done at two millimeters thick, the second one at one millimeter thick and the preference will be to use the one millimeter thick cap rail. In order to get the uh, cap or top rail of the cockpit to fit accurately I've had to pin it and I've used mahogany dowels um, and I'm going to use PVA glue to stick it. Not all plans work out in the end and I had a great deal of difficulty trying to clamp the rail in place so after trying literally everything I thought I could do I ended up using CA to lock or hold it in place and that works pretty good when you can't get a clamp on any spot. We've um, put the pedestals in, there are six of them, and we have temporarily fitted the, the seat. As it never goes in the way you want it to go. But before we can finalize the seat, we need to put the rudder in, and then we're going to do the same the same exercise as we did before by cladding the seat and we'll put a very thin rim on the inside. This um, video is getting a little too long so we're going to bring this one to an end and pick it up in the next video where we install the rudder and the, the helm and then the seat and finally cover the seat and then from there we will move up to the next part of the deck housings.